Um, if I could move on uh, to Ms. Gillis. In 2017, the Liberal government promised to reduce chronic homelessness by 50 percent. Um, it's obviously been six years. How much has chronic homelessness been reduced? Um, thank you for the question. Um, since that period of time, as we've been talking about the housing crisis, the context in Canada has changed significantly. And at this point, uh, chronic homelessness for the last number of years has remained approximately steady at 30,000 uh, people. So it hasn't reduced? It is, as I mentioned, it's, it's remained steady given the context of, uh, of the country right now with the housing crisis and uh, the affordability issues within the country. In 2022, the uh, Auditor General report on chronic homelessness said that your ministry did not know whether your efforts were improving homelessness despite spending $1.36 billion between 2019 and 2021 through the Reaching Home program. I guess, um, you know, you have a new Minister of Housing. What direction has the Minister given you directly since that Auditor General's report? Um, and what is, what, what specifically has the Minister given you? Uh, thank you very much for the question. That particular audit report was done during, mainly during COVID time, and the homeless serving sector during that time did not have the capacity to report on res results. They were dedicated to saving lives and keeping people safe. Since that time, all of our reporting has caught up, and the metrics that I gave before for the first year, three years of the program have been showing tremendous results from the money that has been spent on that particular program. And of the $1.3 million, uh, $3 billion that you mentioned, 708 of that went to dedicated health services to pro keep people alive, like nursing, like vaccines, like masks, like social distancing, like temporary housing. So that information wasn't available when the Auditor General wrote the report because we are still in COVID times. Since then, it has all been caught up Ms. and we are Thanks, Ms. publishing Thank the information. You. Sorry, I, for people watching, it's we have such limited time. That's why we often have to, uh, to cut short. I, I, would, I would respectfully um, push back on that response. Uh, as somebody who lives in a community whose homelessness has skyrocketed, it, it feels a bit insulting, to be honest with you, Ms. Gillis, to say that things are, have done tremendous success. I'm, I'm not finished yet. So I, I just don't think that that's a very um, compassionate or realistic approach. It feels a little bit like toxic positivity, if I'm going to be honest with you. Moving on. Um, so we have, uh, as of Friday, October 27th, 2023, funding streams for Reaching Home. Reaching Home has four regional fund streams that provide funding to communities to address local homelessness needs. Designated Communities Funding Stream, closed. Indigenous Homelessness Funding Stream, no way to apply. Rural and Remote Homelessness Funding Stream, closed. Territorial Homelessness Funding Stream, no way to apply. Ms. Gillis, how do you expect to have such a successful program when people who need this most can't even apply for it? Thank you very much for the question. In uh, the Reaching Home program, uh, what we want to do is have transparency and results, and that's why I wanted to you know, mention regarding the Auditor General's report, now we can report on the results. We know that more is required, and that's why we're doing research programs. In the particular program, we do allocate it to community entities over a period of time, and they continue to fund these particular programs. Regarding those particular applications, I will turn to my colleague and, and talk about those particular closures and what's going on regarding each of those streams. Thank you. Yeah, th so <clears throat> because we allocate the money out to community partners, it's really uh, at their discretion when they accept new applications, mm -hmm. when they fully allocate all their funding. So it really would vary community by community so whether Ms. there's still funding available. In Thank you, Mr. Year. Chair. I, again, would push back. You have, you have people, uh, and, and Ms. Bowers has talked about, you have the middle, missing middle right now. You have people who have who would never even consider being homelessness. The face of homelessness has drastically changed. And you're saying, well, these programs are, are closed right now. So it's, you know, it, it just doesn't make any sense. If these are programs des designated for immediate emergency funding and they're closed, how are you supposed to help the people who less than a mile from where we're sitting right now are living in tents? I can thank you very much for the question. 
the allocations are forward looking so in the five hundred sixty two million dollars that we're allocating for the next two years although there are there are close for new entities we are allocating further money to those community entities to be able to address the homelessness situation in their communities and that's why when the minister was here and what we're doing action research that's why we're doing a veterans program because we know more is required and it is super important and i am certainly you know, very acutely aware of how much this is important and this in, to address and how you know, more is required. And that's why we are looking at what more. That's why we did a survey on encampments and continue to work in this area. Thank, Thank you, you, Ms. Ferrari. Uh, 